Welcome to the Equinity Podcast, where horse owners just like you share their incredible Equinity stories and how Equinity is changing their horses' lives. Whether you're searching for something to give your performance horse better focus, faster recovery, and more stamina, or in the extreme case where all hope seems lost, give your horse what it needs to help heal at a cellular level, you'll find it here. So jump in on today's episode to hear how Equinity is helping horses worldwide. Now, welcome your host, John Dowdy. Hello and welcome to this week's Equinity Podcast. It's podcast number 133, and we are swinging way out to the northwest up in Washington. We've got Chris Kinzel on the podcast this week. Chris, welcome to the Team Equinity Podcast. Hi, John. I'm so happy to be able to talk to you and to um, share my story. Yeah, and you know, when I first um, came across your story, I think it was uh, in some of the the comments um, through some of the ads we were running on uh, Facebook, and I'm just like, oh, that we got to get that story out there because <laughs> <laughs> uh, this was kind of a, uh, I, it could have been uh, classified as a mystery lameness, but it was zeroed in pretty quickly down in the hoof uh, area problem. So um, give us some background. What's the name of the horse? How old's the horse? Give us some uh, background and, and what kind of happened. Sure. Um, his name is TD. His, he's a registered quarter horse. His registered name is a Willie Good version. So I bought Petey as a long yearling coming two year old and had and had had him for about two years. Um, he was with a trainer and she was feeding him way too high a protein grain. Um, in January of 21, he came up lame. He would be he would be lame, and then he'd be found, and then he'd be lame, and then he'd be found. And um, they thought he had um, white line. The the farrier um, of my trainer thought he had white line. Well, he cut out the white line on a trip that he had made to the barn. And a um, week or so later, um, I'm going back a little far now. I just trying to remember sure. all the, <laughs> yeah. all the, a little, all a few details. days have passed since then. <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, and so it continued on. So about, he was still lame and sound and lame and sound. Um, and a couple, two or three weeks later, she texted me and she said, I think I found out why he's lame. And she had sent me a picture, um, texted me the picture of, he has a quarter crack. So um, luckily, another farrier in the barn happened to be there that day, and he um, fixed him up, um, put putty over the crack, and um, and put his shoe back on, basically, um, cleaned up the crack a little bit. Mm-hmm. So, but even after that, um, shortly after that, it happened again. He came up lame again. So um, in April. I finally said, you know, that's it. I just need to bring him home. So I brought him home the 1st of May. Um, He was a crazy man. He was just, he was crazy in his stall. Um, She wasn't riding him. Well, come to find out. um, Well, not find out. I knew this. Because of the 32% protein grain, she was feeding him. He And because he had been lame and sound and lame and sound, he wasn't getting out of the stall or being ridden like he should be. Um, so I brought him home and um, my husband and I kind of debated on what we were going to do. So a friend of mine said, well, you just, you need to have a feed x-ray. So I said, yeah, you're absolutely right. So um, I hauled him to a vet here that we have close to us. Um, he's an equine podiatrist, wonderful vet. Um, he's also a farrier, um, had him x-rayed, and he had laminitis with a 3 to 4% rotation in his coffin bone. Mm. Um, I had never in my life had a horse with laminitis, never. Um, so I took him home. Um, our vet, Joey, said, you know, this is what you need to do. So we immediately got our, our farrier out had to put pads and roll bar shoes on him and um, put and had him put him on equinity within 
a week. Well, back up just a little bit. So when I would walk, when I would hand walk him out in the pasture just to get him out um, and let him graze on some grass, if he would step on one of the little grass clumps, he would go lame. But just to walk, he was pretty much sound. But if he trotted, you could see the lameness. So I immediately put him on equinity, and within a week of, of putting him on equinity, he was sound again. That was May of 2021. He has not taken a lame step since. That's pretty incredible. Yeah, it is. My husband, my <laughs> my husband is your biggest fan. Let me tell you, <laughs> he said you are never ever taking him off equinity. Yeah. That stuff, I I I love it. I love it. I thought I was going to have to put another horse down. I had no idea. Wow. What was the um, going back to the vet when you found out sure. that with the laminitis and the rotation? What, what was the projected recovery time? He never, he didn't tell me. He didn't tell me. He just said, um, I switched. He said, take him home. Make sure you give him, get get him off the grain or give him as, as little grain as you can. So I switched him to, um, a a very low starch, uh, grain and I was afraid he wasn't going to eat it. Um, but he just, he's a chow hound. So, (laughs) um, luckily, yeah. Um, with the, and, the, I just mix the equinity in with the grain with a little bit of water and, um, it mixes right in. There's no problem with it. Um, him eating it, he, he slurps it right up. Right. So I, and I did start out giving him, um, the equinity twice a day. Mm-hmm. So I went through two, I went through two containers, um, of equinity giving him, uh, twice a day. And then I back down to once a day. Yes, and I'll get into the the science behind that and and the reason two scoops versus one. Um, how long was it from the time your farrier was working on the horse and you started feeding the equinity until he came his reaction when he saw the the new hoof growth and everything? So, going so I never get to see my farrier, <laughs> my husband, because I work and my husband is at home. He's retired, um, so I never get to see my farrier. But um, my husband would give me glowing reports. Um, and Shane, my farrier, he called me a couple times um, within the I, at least, if not the first, the second trimming. He he just kept saying, "You guys need to keep doing what you're doing. Keep doing what you're doing. It's getting better." Um, I can say by May. So by, I'm going to say November, December, would, when Shane would trim him and then go to nail the shoe back on, yeah, it was December. So he, Tim, my husband, Tim, um, had told him, you know, please call Chris and tell her what, you know, tell her what you're seeing and how he's doing. So he called me that night and he said, um, the one great thing is, He's not flinching when I nail the shoe back on anymore. Ah, uh, and what? So how, from what, what kind of time frame was this? May to December. Okay, yeah. Uh, this is 20, 21? Uh, 20, 20, 21. Yes. Okay, yeah. Twenty twenty one. Yeah. Wow. So yeah, when he said that, I started crying. Yeah. I was so I was so relieved. He said he he's just he's gotten better. Mm-hmm. And you, you can see, you can, he, he kept saying, you can see where he's healing. Sure. Now, I know you also took, uh, well, the quarter crack. Um, what happened to the, to the quarter crack? Oh, it's gone. <laughs> so I just, ha- I just had him. Yeah, I just had him reshod last week and the quarter crack is gone. Yeah. So I know you had taken the x-rays before and, uh, yeah. and then you're going to have, post x-rays done, I guess, next week sometime? Yes. Yes. Yeah. The week from, uh, yes, next week. Yeah. So we, we hear this all the time, but um, when this podcast is posted on our website at teamequinity.com, we'll also have it transcribed. And so the x-rays might come in a week or so later, but we'll post the before and afters because based on all the other um, before and after x-rays we've seen 
over eight years, um, pretty much guarantee that that, that soul death is going to be thicker <laughs> than it oh, once yeah, was. Oh, yeah. yeah, it is. Yeah. It is. So what, and he told me, he told me, well, and this is going through my husband. <laughs> yes. um, he says it's, it's just the, the white line from the laminitis is so small. Yeah. But he's continuing to um, nail, keep putting the nail, um, nailing the shoe away from that until he thinks that it, you know, sure. it'll be okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, you know, it's interesting because I tell people all the time that the uh, Quinity Horsic Cell is not a miracle supplement. And then we hear stories like this. And, you know, for all things considered, you know, just changing the environment that the horse was in is going to have a huge um, yeah. positivity yeah. for the horse. I mean, we all get that. Um, but what we found over eight years, uh, horses in general, they're typically just lacking in amino acids. And one of the things that makes the Aquini horse Excel so unique is it doesn't fit into a specific supplement category. In other words, it's not just a hoof supplement and it's not right. just a joint supplement or a recovery supplement or shiny coat supplement. I mean, it actually helps do all of these things, but the way that it works from a scientific aspect, when you give a scoop of this, just one scoop in the morning, as an example, um, these amino acids are specific to targeting the pituitary gland, which is the gland that releases repairing hormones, to make it simple. And then the body is able to send its own hormones to its own problem areas. So it's it's customizing to exactly what the horse needs, and it takes a lot of the guesswork out of it. And the interesting thing is, is that the hormones that are released have a 23-and-a-half-hour life cycle. So what that means is when you give a scoop in the morning, by the time you give a scoop the next morning, the hormone levels are back to where they would normally be for that age of a horse, which is perfectly fine in pretty much all situations. Now, um, you had said or mentioned that you were, you were giving a scoop in the morning and the evening. And Correct. the science behind that is for an injured horse and or even for the working performance horse that doesn't have any injuries or problems per se, but we're after the recovery aspect by giving a scoop in the morning and a scoop in the evening, we're keeping the hormone levels elevated all the time. And so it helps promote faster recovery and repair. And so in all of the situations that we've heard about over eight years, especially with an injured horse, by using two scoops of equinity morning and evening, or also let me clarify, one scoop in the morning, one scoop in the evening, then they're typically always back ahead of schedule. And so, yeah. you know, going back to what I was saying earlier, you know, the Equinity Horse Excel is not a miracle supplement, but it's giving your horse what it needs to help repair itself, taking a lot of the guesswork out, and it helps get your horse back to where you want them to be sooner. And a lot of farriers are catching on because, you know, we've heard stories through the years where especially some of the older horses, they oh, we just run a rasp on there a couple of times and, and that's their foot care. That's right. <laughs> right. And so now they'll come out and they go, what in the world are you giving this horse? We actually had to clip some stuff off. So it really helps promote, Yeah, you know. And things. I'm blessed to have a really, really good farrier who really cares about his work. Sure. Yeah. And that's so important, too. I mean, you know, it, it, as any horse owner knows, you know, you, you get the, the wrong person in there and they do the wrong thing. And now you've got a lame horse and now we've right. got to get them repaired again. And so. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And you may not call equinity a miracle drug, but I sure in hell do. <laughs> and, you know, we all, as horse people, we all look at products. We try so much. I'm going to try this and try this and try this. And this doesn't work. Quit trying and just go to equinity. Wow. Oh, my gosh. I, yeah. And it, I, I didn't even pay you for that segment, but thank you. No, you did not. <laughs> but I, I, you know, I so firmly believe in equinity right now. Um, I had used it previously the way I found you. I had used it on my previous gelding that I had to put down before I got PD. He had, um, I had had to do a stem cell procedure on a suspensory ligament and gave him equinity while he was healing from, from the procedure. Mm -hmm. Um, and he did so well from healing, but, yeah. um, I, I, I just love, I love you, John. I really do. I wow. love your product. Um, again, like I said, don't try everything. Just try equinity. Well, it, it's hard to disagree with you on that one. Um, 
Now, I'll, I'll throw a couple other things out there, and, and we really appreciate you coming on and, and sharing the story and, and the nice comments and everything. And I would say one of the, the big questions that we, we receive all the time when people are first learning about the product, because it is so unique, one of the questions is, do I stop using all the other supplements and just use Equinity or what do we do there? Well, I come from the school of, I don't know your horse at all. Um, and then based on whatever you tell me, you know, we're not, we don't want to change anything that you're already doing. So don't change any of your supplement program, your feeding program, anything. Just add a scoop of Equinity Horse Excel to it. And that way you're only changing one element. And it works really quickly. And I'll give people the the rundown. So the, the amino acids are absorbed within hours. And, yeah. Yeah. and it goes right to work. And so what we've heard through the years, horses that have a lot of stress, anxiety, or a bit spooky, we've seen complete demeanor changes in as little as two or three days. For the working performance horse in about a week to two weeks, people are noticing that they just feel more comfortable under saddle. Uh, they have fast recovery, more stamina, better focus. And we get into the 30-day mark, and they're going to notice softer, shinier coat, filling out, top line, hips area. And we've even had a lot of people start to notice a, a bit more firmness in the sole depth, although that's going to come more towards the six-week mark um, where you're really going to start getting the overall healthier, stronger, faster hoof growth, which, again, gives the farrier more to work with. And, you know, there's so many other benefits to using the product because when you can help the horse repair itself from the inside out, that solves a lot of issues. Um, and so you know, it's one of the reasons why we started the podcast and, you know, with yours being the 133, number 133. Wow, you know, right. Um, and some of the stories that we have on there where I thought we were going in to talk about one horse, like, oh, no, I've got five to talk about. So, <laughs> Oh, wow. Wow, I'm like, that's All cool. right, let's run them down. And, you know, you could have 50 horses with 50 different things going on, and it's it's so awesome to hear the stories because, you know, it, it really helps, and it helps very quickly. So, I really appreciate you uh, taking the time to, to share your story about PD and, and uh, glad that he's doing so well. Yes, he is. And I, John, I mean, I can't tell enough people how wonderful this product is. It's just, Equinity has been my lifesaver. And PD, I mean, he's only five. So um, this summer with gas prices the way they are, I don't know what's going to happen with us. Uh-huh. I hope to do a little showing, but. I'm sure whatever it is, um, he's going to be fabulous. Doing oh, yeah. It. He's going to be having a good old time. <laughs> yeah. And he's, and being five, so he's grown. He was, he grew this whole year. And I, yes, he's filled out. My husband keeps saying, as, as the, as the woolly bear is, sh- is shedding out, um, he's, he's filled out. His top line is, is getting really nice. Um, yeah. That's awesome. I can't wait to see him without his, I can't wait to see him without his winter coat. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And typically they're uh, slick as all get out. Just, they look like a million bucks, but uh, that is so great. Well, Chris Kinzel out of Washington, thank you so much for taking the time to share your story here on the Team Equinity podcast. Thank you, John. I'm so happy that you chose me. Thank you so much. Oh, you're very welcome. Thank you. That's Bye-bye. all for this episode of Take the care. Equinity podcast. For more information on purchasing Equinity, be sure to visit our website at teamequinity.com, where you'll also find product information as well as more testimonials on how others have seen amazing results by implementing Equinity into their horse's supplement regime. We'll have more stories on how Equinity is helping horses worldwide right here on a future episode of the Equinity podcast.